never enjoyed running. But if it included a ball or like something like that, then I could deal with running, right? So if it if there was an activity involved with it, then I could deal. But I could never just get behind the idea of just just running, like just running and not going anywhere or going in a circle. I just couldn't get behind it. In fact, when I was a kid, I used to have this soccer coach that would just run us to death. And I think that is what helped me hate running. And so I'd go to soccer practice, and he would just be like, we'd play soccer, and at the end, he'd be like, okay, we're going to run 10 times around the field. And I'm like, oh, what? Like, we're not doing that. I was the kid that a freshman year of high school, I showed up to cross-country practice, first day, and after that practice, I quit. <laughs> I, just, I was like, I'm not doing this. Like, we, we didn't go anywhere. <laughs> and, and I couldn't deal with any of that. Running was just something that I could never really get into until this year. This year, uh, starting in February, I started running. I was, I was trying to get in better shape or something like that, but I'd hop on a treadmill and I'd and I'd run. In fact, I really struggled at first. Um, I couldn't I couldn't run very far without saying, "Man, I'm I'm done or I'm tired or I just I don't want to do this anymore," and so I'd quit. Until something happened, something changed, and then after that, um, running not only became something that I like to do, but I could do, and I enjoyed doing it. There was a breaking point for me. And ever since I hit that breaking point, now I like to run. And I'll hop and I'll, I'll find myself getting up in the morning and running. And, and, I'll, and I'll do miles or whatever like that. But a, the breaking point for me was when I became intentional about my time and my distance. You see, before that, I would just start running and I'd be like, well, I'll just run until I'm tired. Well, guess how long that lasted? <laughs> not very long, right? I got tired and I was like, well, I'll just, I'll be done. Like, I don't, I'm not enjoying this. But then when I... When I became intentional about, well, I'm going to run for this amount of minutes, or I'm going to run for this amount of distance, and when I could finally push myself in my mind to say, don't stop until you get there, then all of a sudden I started hitting different goals and milestones, and then I started to enjoy it. And I really believe that for me, running changed when I became intentional. And here's why I tell you that. I think this idea uh, is true for all of us when it comes to reading our scripture. That if we were to be intentional about reading scripture, I think it could change your whole faith. I've been where you're at. I know what it's like to, to sit here and listen to someone talk to you again, again, again about reading your Bible and say, I've heard this since I, I've been a kid, right? But I think there are some things, and I think there's people in this room that have figured this out, is when you, when you figure this out, when you learn how to be intentional with reading scripture, I think it changes your faith, changes your relationship with God, changes the way that you interact with people in the world, and that's what I'm aiming for today, how we engage with scripture. You can go from just being told to do it to actually loving it, and, and in fact, maybe needing it. This word intentional is going to be the focus of this series over the course of January. To put us all on the same page, intentional means this, to be done on purpose or deliberate. And so everything that we talk about this month is going to be under this idea of certain areas of our faith that instead of just saying, well, I'll hop on the treadmill and see how long I last, instead of just finding areas in our faith that really are important, instead of just saying, well, I'll just see what I can do or see um, how this plays out, what if we said, I'm going to be intentional about how I read, about how I pray? about how I serve, about how I worship, about how I find solitude. If we, if we found some intentional ways to do those things, I truly believe, even as teenagers, you will find different levels of your faith. And so what we're going to talk about tonight is reading Scripture. So how do you feel about reading your Bible? Uh, look at your neighbor and give like that little thumbs up. Like a thumbs up, this is, this is easy for me, I do it all the time, and I got it. Or like maybe in the middle, like, oh, it's like, you know, so-so, we're like, I suck at this, boo me, I don't ever read my Bible unless someone makes me. Get, go ahead, tell, give your neighbor like a little, you know, you could put it under on the side of the hip, so if you don't want anybody to see it, right? You know, put a little gauge on it, just right now, how you feel. Maybe, maybe starting January 1, you started a Bible plan, but, you know, it's January 3rd, maybe you've lost, you know, you've, you've got off track already. But all of us struggle with this, I think. At least if you're a Christian for long enough. You're going to find yourself going through stretches or times where you're like, reading my Bible is a task, or, or it's difficult, and this is what I want us to move 
beyond. We simply can't afford to not figure this out. What God has put in front of you with, with the Bible is so important, so vital to a vibrant relationship with him that we can't afford to just hope that we do it. We've got to be intentional. And that's what we're going to aim to talk about tonight. The scripture that I want to share with you is from 2 Timothy chapter 3, and you've probably heard this verse before, but here's what it says. All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. There's so much good information and truth in those verses, but what I want to do is give you some real practical ways uh, for you to be intentional about reading scripture, okay? So that, that's my aim for tonight, is instead of us just saying, well, I hope I read the Bible, or I hope it seems interesting to me, let's be intentional about this. So here's the first idea, is that we need to be intentional about why you read your Bible, about the why, why you read your Bible. As with anything you do, you need to know why you do it. Just like when your parents give you a rule, right? Sometimes your question, your, your response is, why, Right? Why do I have to be home at 10, right? Why can't I do that? Why, why do I have to clean my room? We're constantly asking why because we want to know the reason behind it because sometimes you feel like, well, I don't understand. How, why you read your Bible is important. Understanding the, the, the reason why you read. And when it comes to your faith, you need to be intentional about why you read your Bible. There is a wrong answer to this question. And sometimes this is the answer that we find ourselves giving, regardless of circumstances, well, because I'm supposed to, right? That, that's the wrong reason. That I hope that you don't, you may feel like that today, and I'll be honest with you, I've felt that way. I, I, I've been there where if someone says, well, why do you read? Well, aren't we supposed to? Like, I'm a Christian, or, you know, like, I've been told I should, maybe someone like me has told you, you should read your Bible. That's not why you should read your Bible. We, we can't have that approach because if your answer to why you read is, well, I'm supposed to, that, I'll be real with you, that's going to wear off. You're not going to last very long being a Christian if the only reason that you read your Bible is because you were told that you were supposed to. That's going to wear off and you're going you're gonna to stop reading and you're not going to be involved in that. So we have, it, we have to have a different why. Here's the why. And it comes right from our text. All scripture is God breathed. That, that's our why. Everything, everything written in that book that you're either holding on your phone or that you had earlier, everything in that book is breathed by God. It's the word of God. It comes from him to us. It's holy. It's perfect. It's life changing. And it was written specifically for you. That's the why. That's, that's why we read. Reading your Bible is not something that you're supposed to feel like you should just have to do. It should be something that you desire. Because it's God's word. I mean, think about this. The creator of all things, the Lord of the universe, the one that put everything together, that we sang about that split seas into highways, that brings bones to life, that turns graves into gardens. This God put something together as a book for you to read, for you to know him, for you to engage in a relationship with him. That's why we read it. To be closer to God. And when we understand that, when we understand our why, maybe you'll be desperate to read your scripture. To get to know God better. Not as, well, I'm supposed to do this, or I've got to check it off my list. No, I want to engage with the, with the creator of the world. I want to engage in a relationship with God. When you get to that point, and that's your why, reading the Bible isn't something that you just have to check off and make sure that you do. It becomes something that you want to do that you long to do, that you desire to do. You have to know your why. That's where we have to get. There's more than just knowing why, right? We have to get beyond just knowing why. Uh, I believe that knowing the why is important, and we have to start with that as the foundational point, but then we have to understand, well, how do I do it, right? That's why it's important. Our second point is to be intentional about how you read your Bible. Not just why, but how you read your Bible. Now, that's the question that so many students your age and kids that have sat in the same seats as you have asked, how do I read my Bible? Where do I start? What am I supposed to get out of it? I, I don't know what I'm supposed to take away. I don't know how to do this. 
I know that I'm supposed to. I, maybe I even feel compelled to do it. But like, where do I begin and what do I do and how do I read it? And how do, like, how do I actually do this? Sometimes it's not always what you read, but it's how you read it. Now, is there anybody in here who's like really good at sarcasm? Like maybe sarcasm is a second language for you. Like that's kind of, yeah, don't, don't be shy. Like sarcasm is good in some places, right? So sarcasm is based on this idea of like, um, it's not necessarily what you say, but it's how you say it, right? Now, if you walk in, if you sit in your small group later tonight and you answer a question out loud and your small group leader says, that was brilliant, you're going to feel good about that, right? You're going to be like, yeah, like I'm, I got this thing, well, I'm smart, right? Because of how they said it. Well, what if, what if you gave an answer and your small group leader kind of looked around the circle and go, that was brilliant. Would you feel the same way? No, right? It's, it's not what was said. That's the same sentence. It was how it was said. Maybe you've been there. Maybe you're small. I've been there, okay? So maybe your small group leader has given one of those responses to you, but it's not what, it's, it's how. And I think that that concept is true with how we read Bible. It's not always what you read. You could start in Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. You could start in Genesis. You could be in Revelation. It's not about the what, okay? There are plans. There are ways to do this. There's ways to make it easier, and there's a lot of good things out there. But let me break it down to a basic level. It's not about what you read. It's about how you read it. Here's what I mean by that. Paul tells Timothy this. He says, all scripture is God-breathed, and it is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. What's that mean? That means that Scripture, every time that you read it, has the, has the chance, the opportunity to change your life, to make you a better person, to make an impact in your life. That means how you read Scripture is important. What I mean by that is what's your motivation? Is your motivation a checklist? To say, yeah, I do that. that. That's part of my, like, that's part of my Christian duties. Is your, is your motivation, like, to, to gain more knowledge? Like, I want to be really smart, and so i got to read the Bible and, and to learn a lot of things? Or is your motivation to do something along those lines? To be molded, to be shaped, to be corrected, rebuked, to be trained. For God to shape you and to reveal areas in your life that you need to fix or, or to to aim and be aligned more with him is, is, is how you read scripture looks like that. Because how you read it is important. And what you hope to get out of it is important as well. So many people, I think, when they read scripture are looking to, to learn something about something and, and, and gain factual information. Or you're just doing it because your motivation is just to get it done. But what if you came in and you were intentional about how you read to say, God, right, every time I read this, every time I open up Scripture, I'm looking for ways for you to change me. I, I'm looking for ways for you to shape my heart. I'm looking for you for, for ways to, to change the, the type of person. I want you to make me more like Jesus. And if we sat down and read Scripture, it doesn't matter if you read one sentence or you read a paragraph or you read a whole chapter. Right? It's not about what you read, it's about how you read it. And if you can come in and say, I'm intentionally asking God and hoping that what I read here changes me to be more like Jesus. How you read scripture is so important. So I want to challenge you to be intentional with that. Don't make it a checklist. Don't make it some, Listen, maybe some of you on January 1st started a, a challenge and, and you're trying to get through the Bible in a year or you're, or you're starting a plan or something like that. And you're like, I, I've got to read this amount. That's fine. That's great. I don't care what the amount is, but what you read, how you read it is important. Whether it means you're taking notes or whether it means you're meditating over verse or you're, you give yourself a bottom line and say, no, what I read, what is God telling me? I don't know if you've ever done that before. Where you've read something, whether it's a book or even scripture or a textbook from school, and you read it and you get to the end of it and go, I don't even remember what I just read, right? You, you've been there? Like, that happens to me all the time. And I'm like, why did I just spend my time reading that? And I, like, dozed off or I thought about something else. Those are the moments where you have to step back and say, is this important enough that I'd go back and reread it? You know, I think maybe one time I engaged, I told you one of the practices that you can do is just read a scripture three times in a row, right? 
read it three times in a row, and then find out what God is pointing out to you. How you read is so important, and I want to challenge you to be intentional with that. Not just a checklist, not just something that you're supposed to do, not just to get it done, but to be intentional, to ask God to train you, to rebuke you, to correct you. Quality over quantity. Here's the third idea, is that we have to be intentional about when you read your Bible. This is one of the most practical things that you, be, you can begin to be, to be doing uh, to start this idea. But have a plan about when you will read. It doesn't matter. It could be in the morning. It could be at night. It could be a study hall whenever you're at school. Or, you know, it could be uh, after school. It doesn't matter. But be intentional about when you will read. If you've had trouble reading your Bible, and I'm gonna, I want to ask for a show of hands because I bet we've all been there, right? If you've had trouble being, like, consistent in reading your Bible— Chances are the reason is is because you weren't intentional about when you were going to do it, right? You, you said, well, if I, like, as long as I got time, I'll do it. And so you find yourself at the end of the night, and some nights you're like, yeah, I'm not as tired. I'll read my Bible. And other nights you're like, yeah, it's been a long day. I don't think I'm going to read today. Or, you know, you said, well, I'm going to do it in the morning. Well, like, that alarm clock, that snooze button sounded pretty good that morning. So you hit it, and then you didn't have time. We've got to be intentional about the most opportune times in your life for you to read Scripture. I'm not asking you to, to set aside an hour. Maybe that's what you need. Maybe that's where you're at. But if you're at, if you're at like the basic, if you're on level one right now, like I don't do this at all, just start with five minutes or three minutes. I don't care. Start somewhere where you say, here's when I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it on the ride to school or I'm going to do it, you know, after lunch, or I'm going to do it right when I get home from school, or I'm going to do it first thing. I don't, it doesn't matter. Like, that doesn't matter, and everybody's life is different. But be intentional. When I stepped on that treadmill, if I wasn't intentional, I could last a half a mile and be like, well, I'm just going to walk the rest, or, you know, or whatever it was. But when you are intentional, then you can make it happen. I want you to be able to have a plan. That's really what I'm asking you to think about. Maybe in your small groups tonight, you can talk about this and see where you're at maybe some of you need to be in the bible every single day but maybe some of you just need to start with two or three days it maybe sound weird for me to say but i just want you to have a plan and to start somewhere this is what it all comes down to is that you need to be intentional about this so think about this what is going to be your plan to be intentional about reading your bible that's that's the question okay that's, that's the idea. What is going to be your plan? And if you sit here and look at this question and go, I don't, like, I don't have one, let's stop right now and think about this. Is this important enough to you? Understanding the why, right? If we understand the why that all Scripture is God-breathed, it is the Word of God that is meant for you, and it, and it trains you, it corrects you, it makes you more like Jesus. And if your why is there, if you understand that this is important for me, this is important Jesus did this. Jesus set time apart to read Scripture. All throughout the New Testament, we're commanded to, to be in Scripture. If we understand the why and we know that it's important, we've got to develop a plan. I don't care what your plan is. I don't care when you do it. I don't care how you do it. I don't care what you do, but do something. Be intentional about getting in Scripture. This is how we grow closer to God. This is how we be more like Jesus. There's no one plan. You can, I've done a lot of different things. I've been in the Bible app. I've done physical Bible. I've done chronological Bible. I've done, uh, started in the middle. I've started from the beginning to the end. There's, there's tons of ways to do it. And maybe some are better than other for you, but be intentional. Don't leave it to chance. Maybe I sound like I'm saying the same thing over and over, but I want you to understand, don't leave this to chance. Don't hope that you read your Bible. Don't hope that you find time. Don't hope that you feel motivated tomorrow. Be intentional. Have a plan. Stick to it and see where it leads you. Decide to make it happen. Here's the idea behind this. If you decide to do this, it'll change you. It, it will. And maybe this, is, this is where, I mean, if you really dive into this, this will change change you if you are intentional about reading god's word it will make a difference in your life here's what jesus said about this jesus told this parable and he he talked about uh seed like um like a farmer would scatter the seed right and he said the seed was the word of god and the seed when he scattered it it didn't grow in all these different places but then look how he ends this parable matthew chapter 13 verse 23 he says but the seed falling on good soil 
refers to someone who hears the word, hears the word and understands it. This is the one who produces a crop yielding 160 or 30 times what was sown. Now, without reading that whole parable, here's what Jesus said. A lot of people listen to scripture. A lot of people can hear the Bible even taught to you or read or in a song or whatever. And some people aren't ready for that. But the person, the person who hears scripture, who reads scripture and understands it, lets it correct you, rebuke you, train you in righteousness, the person that that lets it grow in your life, when you do this, it produces a crop. You make a difference. It changes you. It changes the people around you. This is what Jesus is saying. The Word of God is powerful. That is why it's so important for us to be intentional with reading our Bible. Be intentional about why you do it, how you do it, and when you do it. When we do this, it changes our lives. That's how important reading God's Word is. The question becomes is how much do we care? Because I would guess that if you're in this room tonight, you probably don't, you're not going to sit here and throw a tomato at me and say, I disagree with you. Reading your Bible is not important, right? You're like, yeah, like I get it. That's a, like basic Bible teaching. The question is, do you care enough to do something, to be intentional and to not leave it by chance? That's what this comes down to. We need God's presence in our lives. And one of the most foundational ways to do that is to be intentional with reading Scripture. Pray with me.